Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, that was the Zakat and Sodako Foundation. Let's all endeavor to pay our Zakat. And for those who are not eligible for Zakat, we can also pay our Sodako. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it as an act of Ibadah. Coming up next, inshallah, is reason to believe. Please stay with us. عن ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يحل دم امرئ مسلم إلا بإحدى ثلاث الثيب الزاني والنفس بالنفس والتارك لدينه المفارق للجماعة رواه البخاري ومسلم يا نبي السلام عليك يا رسول السلام عليك يا حبيب السلام عليك صلوات الله عليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him. On the sixth year after the revelation to the Prophet والسلام, decided to end it all. They had enough of this man وسلم, who is spreading his new religion that is not familiar to them. He is calling people to worship only one God. And what about these idols? What about these things that we used to worship for so long? The religion of our fathers and forefathers. So he decided that today I'm going to end it. He took his sword and he went where the Prophet ﷺ was gathering with his companions. And on his way, one of the Muslims hiding his Islam saw him. And he told him, where to, Omar? He said, I'm going to Muhammad, I'm going to kill him. So the man wanted to divert him from his direction. He told him, well, before you kill Muhammad, go and look in your own family. Your sister and her husband, your brother-in-law, have accepted Islam. And this made him furious. So he went to his sister's house broke the door and he went in. The minute they heard his voice, one of the companions hid under the bed. The brother-in-law who was Saeed ibn Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl. And he himself, Saeed ibn Zayd, was one of the ten who were giving the glad tidings of the Prophet ﷺ to enter paradise. These top ten people, top ten companions, if you ask anyone about the bonds league or about the spanish football league or about this or that player which team they're playing for or about the brazilian team they would give you a list of names but if you ask any muslim nowadays who are the 10 whom the prophet ﷺ died while he was pleased with them and he gave them the glad tidings of paradise people would probably know four or five they don't know and this is a big problem. Saeed ibn Zayd, whenever you talk to someone and say, Saeed ibn Zayd, he says, who's he? They don't know that he is one of these ten people. He is the son of the cousin of Umar ibn Khattab. 
His name is Saeed ibn Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl. And his father was Zayd ibn Amr, one of the people whom the Prophet ﷺ, before Islam, he was with him, and this man never prostrated to any of the idols. He never slaughtered to the idols. He used to worship Allah as Abraham, peace be upon him, used to. And he would say to the people, where are your minds? Why don't you think? Allah creates the sheep and Allah brings rain from the heavens so that the trees grow where the sheep feeds over. And now you're slaughtering this sheep to someone else. So his son was Saeed ibn Zayd. And he was married to the sister of Umar ibn Khattab. The minute Umar broke the door and barged in the house, Saeed ibn Zayd stood up, but he's standing up in the face of a hurricane, a tornado. Who would stand in front of Umar? May Allah be pleased with him. And Umar just, you know, weathered him away. He smacked him on the face and the guy was on the ground, couldn't move. And he went to his sister and she was reading the Quran. She had a leaflet. She had some stone with verses of the Quran written on it. And he smacked her on the face and she started bleeding and she was furious as well. And when he saw the blood, he felt sorry and softened a little bit. And he told her, what are you reading? She told him, this is the Quran and I am a Muslim and do whatever you want to do. So he backed up a little bit and said, give it to me. Let me read it. She said, no, you are a kafir. You are a mushrik. You are najis. You are impure. And this book is only held by people who purify themselves. Go and take a bath and come back. So he went and took a bath and came back. And he read the beginning of the verse the verses of chapter of Taha. Ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa. We have not revealed the Qur'an so that you would become one of the miserable ones. And he went on, and subhanallah, he changed. And this is the effect of the Qur'an. People try to stop others from listening to the Qur'an. Because anyone with a clear nature Anyone who is natural and not biased, anyone who's objective, whenever he recites the Quran, he knows that this is the word of Allah. It does not praise people. It does not ask you to give your money to people or to individuals. It does not classify people in ranks. We have this rank is superior than this rank. All people are equal the black and the white, those who are from the east and those who are from the west. When they pray, they pray in one row. This is the Quran and that is why there are lots of efforts to divert people from the Quran because it's the word of Allah. It's not the word of humans. If you recite it, you know immediately that no one can match this. And this is the challenge. 15 centuries ago, Allah Azza wa Jal challenged the people to make 10 chapters like it and then to make one chapter like it. So the least chapter is composed of three verses. Bring only three verses. Try to match it and no one succeeded, which indicates that this is the miracle of our Prophet ﷺ. He did not say it. He could not bring something similar to it. No human can. This is the word of Allah. And that is why it immediately transformed Umar 180 degrees from being a fierce enemy of Islam to wanting to become a Muslim. Why? You have a life that is second to none. You are one of the dignitaries of Quraysh. You are their ambassador. You are one of the strongest, toughest men if not the strongest and toughest man. You drink wine, you fornicate, you have whatever you wish, no one can stand in your face. What makes you accept this religion of Islam 
Why do you want to prostrate and bow to the creator of the heavens and the earth? Why do you want to leave all of this behind and become like any normal person? Simple, because this is the word of Allah. And that is why immediately he was transformed. It is not because of him. We see so many people astray. So many people living like animals. Literally living like animals. Waking up in the morning, working throughout the day, going to bed, not knowing where their life will lead them to. Then what? When we die, it's over. Well, let me make it now. Let me kill myself now and get it over with. This is not a life. Get a life. And this is why Umar got his life. May Allah be pleased with him. So he asked them, where is Muhammad? And they told him that he is in Dar ibn al-Arqam. So he went there, but with a different face, without this anger in his eyes sparkling. He went to meet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was on the sixth year of his revelation, alayhi salatu wasalam. And when the people already heard that he was coming, and they looked from the door, the Muslims were terrified. They saw Umar coming. And the funny thing was that only three days ago, one of the lions of Allah accepted Islam, and that was Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, one of the fierce warriors of Islam, only three days accepted Islam. So he was with the Prophet ﷺ. And the people came to the Prophet, O oh, Prophet of Allah, it's Umar coming. What are we going to do? So Hamza, in a calm voice, sitting down, not even moving from his chair, said, let him come in. If he wants something good, we will help him. If he wants something bad, we will chop his head with his sword, not with ours. We will take the sword from him and chop his head. Look at this bravery and this strength, this power in Hamza. May Allah be pleased with him. That is why the Prophet ﷺ called him Asadullah, the Lion of Allah, the Almighty. Who can stand in his face? So, people being terrified, shaking, they know the strength of Umar. The Prophet said, allow him in. So the minute Umar came in, the Prophet ﷺ did not greet him. The Prophet ﷺ did not stay away from him so that he would not take his sword and attack the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet was unarmed. Yet, he did something that no one would do. He approached Umar and he grabbed Umar from his shirt and he started pulling him and saying, Umar, isn't it time? Isn't it time? And Umar immediately said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu annaka abdullahi wa rasuluh. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of being worshipped except Allah. And I bear witness that you are the servant and the messenger of Allah. And immediately the whole house, the whole Muslim were in that place, said, Allahu Akbar, Allah is great. And the whole of Mecca trembled with this takbir. And the people in the masjid, the dignitaries of the pagans of Quraysh, felt that this is not good. Now this sound is definitely not good. And immediately, what did Umar say? Do you expect Umar to embrace Islam? within half an hour, and then go and sit back and say, well, listen, I have to sit on the internet and gather all the information about Islam and Google it and maybe do this and do that. I'd like to make a few researches. No, immediately he was positive. And he said, oh, Prophet of Allah, give me one good reason why we are hiding in this Dar al arqam and worshiping Allah in secrecy. Give me one good reason. Aren't we on the true path? Then, here's my suggestion, O Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I suggest that we form two rows with Hamza, the Lion of Allah, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, leading one, and with me, 
leading the others. And you, Prophet of Allah, walk in between us. And we head from this house to the Masjid of Al-Haram. We go and we pray and we show everyone that we are not afraid anymore. And the Prophet ﷺ agreed to that. And they went and they entered the Masjid and the pagans of Mecca, the elderly, the dignitaries, they could not do a thing with Hamza, with Umar leading these two rows. And the people of Mecca knew that with the Islam of Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, it was a new era for Islam and the Muslims. This is all the time we have for today's program. Until we meet next time, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك يا إمام الأنبياء أنت في الوجدان حي أنت للعينين ضي أنت عند الحب ري أنت هاد وصفي يا حبيبي يا محمد يا نبي سلام